This Brigham Young University Idaho devotional address by Janielle Nelson, home and family faculty member, was delivered July 11th, 2023. Janelle Nelson has taught in the Department of Home and Family for 23 years. Prior to coming to BYU-Idaho, she taught at Idaho State University for three years. She completed a Bachelor's of Arts in Business and Home Economics and a Master of Education in Occupational Training and Resource Management with a thesis in Curriculum Development. She has also earned an education specialist degree in adult and organizational learning. In her leisure time, Sister Nelson enjoys making cards, sewing, collecting quotes, reading biographies, listening to uplifting music, researching her family history, and painting with Bob Ross. She and her husband, Jim, are the parents of four children and the grandparents of nine. Students, faculty, friends, and family, <clears throat> thank you for being here today. Thank you for the prayer, the scripture, and the uplifting music. This is the last devotional spring semester for those of you who are graduating. Adventure is out there. <clears throat> for those of you who are taking a short break and returning in the fall, we look forward to seeing you again. BYU-Idaho hopes that you are all leaving better than before you came, and others are returning better than before they left. Many of you recognize these blue posters of the BYU-Idaho mission that hang on almost every wall, in every classroom, in the hallways and buildings on campus that says, our mission at BYU-Idaho is to help every student develop as a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be a leader at home, in the church, and in the community. How does BYU-Idaho know if they fulfilled their mission? Well, that depends on you. If you are leaving BYU-Idaho better than before you came, and if you will be returning better than before you left, you have helped BYU-Idaho fulfill their mission. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, in devotional, Brother Ben Hackey taught us that when we are on the covenant path, we become true disciples of Jesus Christ. Though the topic of discipleship is most important, and I encourage all of us to stay on the covenant path, today let's focus on what a purposeful mission is, what it means to develop as a leader, what a leader is at home, in the church, and in the community. I pray for and invite the companionship of the Holy Ghost to be with us as we learn together. Students in FCS 160 Home and Family Resource Management class, whether they are on campus, online, or in the worldwide block course, know that one of our semester-long assignments is to create and live by a mission statement, one that gives vision and purpose to our lives. It was Stephen R. Covey who clarified a mission as <clears throat> a clear and concise summary of your purpose, priorities, and things you need to do each day to reach your goals. This mission statement is a critical part of building a life of purpose, accountability, and fulfillment. It's a compass to keep you on the road to success. Covey believed that a mission statement was the foundation of personal effectiveness and success. He encouraged people to think deeply about their values, their passions, and their goals, and to write a statement that reflected their unique vision for life. Covey himself had a clear vision for his life, which he articulated in his own mission statement, to live, to love, to learn, to leave a legacy. This statement guided everything he did from his work as a consultant to his role as a husband and father. Covey's mission was a call to action. It reminded him to live each day to the fullest, to love those around him, to never stop learning, and growing, and to leave a positive impact on the world. 
Elder David A. Bednar said, there have to be very clear understandings, expectations and understandings about what is the overarching mission. If we understand where we are going, and that takes a lot of time and it takes leaders who are clear about the ultimate objective and the target and the mission, and you spend a lot of time helping people to see and understand that. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, stuff doesn't get done very well. While we focus on and deeply think about our own mission, we can move forward with the next part of the BYU-Idaho mission, to help every student develop as a leader. A leader invites, inspires, and influences others towards a common goal or purpose. So when the mission is clear and purposeful, then as a leader, we can invite, inspire, and influence others. A leader is not necessarily someone with formal authority or power, but rather someone who has the ability to motivate and empower others to recognize and achieve their full potential. There are a number of qualities and characteristics of an effective leader, too numerous to mention. So I condense the devotional discussion board responses into what I am calling our top 10 list. This list does not include leadership qualities in their entirety, but is meant to represent those qualities mentioned most often on the devotional discussion board. Here is our top 10 list. Humility, compassion, willing to sacrifice, patience, kindness, selflessness, love, commitment, unity, and courage. <clears throat> the following stories are of great leaders who exemplify leadership qualities from our top 10 list. The first inspiring story is about Mahatma Gandhi, whose approach to leadership was based on the belief that every individual has the potential to be a leader and that true leadership comes from serving others. He believed that leaders should be humble, compassionate, and willing to sacrifice their own interests for the good of others. One experience of Gandhi's effective leadership was his salt march in 1930. The British had imposed a tax on salt, which had a devastating effect on the poor in India. Gandhi decided to lead a peaceful protest against the tax by walking 240 miles, which is the distance from Rexburg to Salt Lake City, from his religious retreat to the sea, where he and his followers would collect salt from the beach. The salt march became a powerful symbol of resistance against colonial rule and inspired millions of people around the world to join the fight for India's independence. Gandhi's leadership during the Salt March was characterized by his courageous commitment to nonviolence, his willingness to take personal risks, and his ability to inspire and mobilize others to join him in the struggle for justice. Gandhi's legacy as an effective leader continues to inspire people today, reminding us of the power of leadership that is grounded in service, humility, and commitment. A salt march from Rexburg to Salt Lake City is not necessary, though Salt Lake would be the most appropriate place to, <laughs> to gather salt. <laughs> but instead, consider our potential to become leaders, to be humble, compassionate, and willing to sacrifice our own interests for the good of others, as Gandhi did. With the idea of a mission giving us a vision of where we want to be and partnering it with the qualities of humility, compassion, and service, we move forward to the action-oriented part of the BYU-Idaho mission, and that is to apply the qualities of a leader at home, in the church, and in the community. In these areas, leadership is not just about guiding others, but about creating a sense of unity and purpose empowering others to grow and develop, and setting an example for others to follow. <clears throat> the first aspect of the BYU-Idaho mission is to develop as a leader in the home. Elder, 
M. Russell Ballard said, one of your primary responsibilities is to raise up those that will be better, a better leader than you ever were. The home is the first place where we learn about leadership and is also where we can have the most significant impact. Leadership in the home is a critical aspect of being a successful and effective leader. By prioritizing leadership in the home, individuals can create a positive and nurturing environment that promotes growth and development for all family members. One inspiring story about leadership in the home is about a mother named Katie Davis Majors, a young woman from Tennessee who had always dreamed of traveling the world and doing something meaningful with her life. So at the age of 18, she decided to take a gap year and volunteer at an orphanage in Uganda. During her year in Uganda, Katie fell in love with the children she was caring for and with the country itself. She decided to stay in Uganda permanently, and she eventually founded a nonprofit organization that helps provide education and health care to children in need. But even more than her work in Uganda, Katie is known for her leadership in her own home. She and her husband have 13 adopted children, many of whom have special needs. Katie is a devoted mother who has created a warm and loving home for her children, despite the many challenges they face. Katie's leadership in her home is characterized by patience, kindness, and selflessness, three additional qualities on our top 10 list. Katie has taught her children the importance of hard work, perseverance, and compassion, and she leads by example putting their needs before her own. Katie's story is a powerful reminder that leadership isn't just about what you do outside the home. It's also about how you lead within your own family. Her example shows that the qualities of a great leader can have a transformative effect on those around you. Leadership in the home involves creating a sense of shared purpose and vision, setting common goals, and working together to achieve them. When everyone feels invested in the success of the family, <clears throat> we create a strong sense of unity and purpose that can overcome challenges and achieve great things. The next part of the BYU-Idaho mission is to develop as a leader in the church. <coughs> Excuse me. Elder D. Todd Christofferson said, we want your life experience. We want the benefit of your service in the church over the years. We want the benefit of what you've learned at home. Effective leadership in the church begins with humility and a willingness to learn from others. We should be Christ-like listeners, learn from the experiences of those around us, and be open to their feedback. We should be intentional about building connections with other members of our wards and to create a sense of community and belonging. This might involve volunteering for church events, attending small group meetings, or simply taking the time to get to know others. President Russell M. Nelson is an inspiration to many for his dedication to serving others, his commitment to living his values, and his encouraging leadership in promoting love, compassion, and unity, three additional qualities from our top 10 list. Always an example of inspirational leadership, President Nelson has encouraged countless people to live their values, to serve others, and to make a positive difference in the world. His example reminds us that leadership is not just about achieving success, but about using our talents and abilities to make the world a better place. Elder David A. Bednar taught, it's not enough just to give time, talent, and energy as it is to create maximum benefit with that time, talent, and energy, to develop it, enlarge it, increase it precisely as the parable of the talents indicates so that it can be placed on the altar as an offering. Here is a short video reminder of the parable of the talents. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country 
who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered, and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him which hath ten talents, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that he hath, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping, and gnashing of teeth. Create maximum benefit with your time, talent, and energy. The church is a unique community, and leadership in this context involves a commitment to serving others and helping them grow in their faith. It is also about empowering others to take on leadership roles. In the church, we are willing to listen to one another. Everyone has a unique perspective, and we can learn from each other's experiences. The last aspect of BYI Home Mission to develop as a leader in the community. Leadership in the community is perhaps the most diverse and challenging area of leadership. In the community context, leadership involves working together with others to create a better society. It requires a willingness to step outside of our comfort zones and to engage with people who may be different from us. Elder Robert D. Hales observed, we are moving in a way in the world where we have to start coming together and working together in a manner we've never worked before. Effective leadership in the community involves a willingness to listen and learn from others. We should be open to different perspectives and willing to collaborate with people who have different values, beliefs, or backgrounds. This might involve attending community activities, joining local organizations or groups, or simply striking up a conversation with people we meet in our day-to-day -day lives. Our last inspiring story is about Jane Addams, an American social reformer, activist, and leader in the Settlement House movement. In 1889, she founded Whole House in Chicago, which became one of the most famous and successful settlement houses in the United States. 
Hull House provided a range of services to immigrants and working class families, including childcare, education, health care, and social support. Adams was a visionary leader who saw the potential for settlement houses to be transformative spaces for social change. She believed that communities could work together to solve their own problems and that the settlement house movement could be a vehicle for, upbringing, for bringing about social justice and equality. Under Adams' leadership, Hull House became a vibrant center for social and political activity, hosting lectures, concerts, and debates on topics ranging from women's suffrage to labor rights. She worked tirelessly to improve the lives of the people in her community, fighting for better housing, education, and health care. Adams' leadership and advocacy inspired a generation of social reformers, and her legacy continues to inspire people around the world. She was a trailblazer for, for women in leadership, and her dedication to social justice and community empowerment serves as a model for all those who seek to make a positive impact in their communities. Whatever it is we decide to do as leaders in our communities, Elder D. Todd Christofferson encourages us to just be a part of it and make a contribution. Elder Robert D. Hales recommended one additional leadership quality that appears on our top 10 list. He said, above all, we need leaders who are courageous. So a leader is someone who inspires and empowers others to achieve their goals, is courageous, and can make a positive impact on the world around them. Remember, BYU-Idaho hopes that you leave here better than before you came, and you will return better than before you left. You can leave here better than when you came by having a mission that provides vision, purpose, and meaning. You can return better than before you left by being an effective leader in your home, the church, and the community. In the name of the greatest leader of us all, Jesus Christ, amen. For more information about this program, please visit the BYU-Idaho website at byui.edu devotionals.